GDMS is a cloud-based solution that provides the ability to easily manage Grandstream products before, during, and after deployment. Today, I'd like to take you through the process of adding and managing your VoIP device. I'm going to assume you already signed up for your free GDMS account. If not, what are you waiting for? Visit gdms.cloud and get yourself signed up. With that out of the way, let's get started. Step 1. Accessing Grandstream GDMS First, open your preferred web browser and navigate to the Grandstream GDMS website at gdms.cloud. Again, if you don't have an account yet, click on the Sign Up button and follow the registration process. Once you're logged in, you'll be greeted with the GDMS dashboard. From the dashboard, users can select to access the different subsystems depending on the different managed devices models by clicking the system selection options in the left upper corner. In this video, we'll be discussing only the VoIP system menu. By selecting VoIP system, users can remotely manage Grandstream IP phones, ATAs, gateways, decked, and wireless phones. Step 2. Select an organization. In GDMS, an organization refers to a logical grouping or structure that helps you organize and manage your devices efficiently. An organization allows you to group devices based on various criteria, such as location, department, or specific deployment scenarios. By creating organizations, you can easily manage and apply configurations, firmware upgrades, and monitoring settings to multiple devices simultaneously. It provides a way to streamline the management process, especially when dealing with a large number of devices across different locations or departments within your organization. Let's go ahead and select the default organization in this example. Step 3. Add a device. To add a device, navigate to Device Management, VoIP Device, and then click on Add Device. Next, fill in the required fields, such as the device name, MAC address, and serial number. You can find the MAC address and serial number on the physical device or its packaging. Once you've entered all the necessary information, click Save. Now that your device is added, you can see device details like MAC address, device model, firmware version, and so on. Step 4. Device Setup and Configuration Under Device Management, VoIP Device, click on Set Parameter. Now, it's time to configure the settings for your device. GDMS provides an intuitive interface to customize various features. You can set up network parameters, SIP accounts, and other specific device settings according to your requirements. Take your time to adjust the settings and once you're done, click Save and Apply. Do note that this configuration will only be applied to this specific device. Step 5. Provisioning In this step, GDMS will generate a configuration file based on your settings. Make sure your device is connected to the internet and turned on. GDMS will automatically provision the device by sending the configuration file to it. You'll be able to see the provision in progress on the screen. Step 6. Provision a group of devices using a template. When you're dealing with more than one device and you need to push a configuration to either an entire site or for a particular model, or both, we suggest using model template or site template. For example, you wanted to provision all GRP 2614s with the same preferred voice codec, and maybe you wanted to also enable allow barge in by call info. Simple, just create a model template for the GRP 2614, set the preferred codec, enable your barge in by call info and click save. Next, GDMS will prompt you to apply the template configuration to all devices of the same model within the corresponding site or you can click Provision Selected Devices, which will allow you to select which devices pick up the configuration. In this example, we'll go ahead and select Apply All to apply this template configuration to all devices of the same model. Your device is now added and provisioned successfully. You can manage your device by accessing the device management page. From here, you can monitor the device's status schedule various tasks, and even remotely troubleshoot issues. Well, that's all I have for today's quick overview. Be sure to tune in next time, where we discuss how to manage your device's firmware, schedule tasks, and even show you how to run diagnostics. Thank you, and bye for now.